Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome! My name is Kyle, and this channel is all about houseplant things. And in today's video, I am going to go over something kind of fun, and that a lot of people are interested in lately, and that is pawn. And pawn is like an alternative substrate that a lot of people are using. There's a brand Lechuza, they do their own, and they're always sold out, so that's where today's video comes in in making DIY pond and on their website they actually have it listed like what they use in it. It comes down to pumice, lava rock, and zeolites. Now I don't necessarily know what zeolites are. They kind of help keep the substrate in the water clean of like bacteria and stuff I guess. It's used a lot in fish tanks and that's actually where I found mine was at an aquarium store. So yeah, if you're interested in making your own pond and it sounds like something you wanna see done, go ahead and keep watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below and let's get on into this. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is kinda go over what I have in pond and I'm going to start off with the very first plant that I had put in pond. The first plant that I had put in pond was a Hoya, because I noticed a lot of people do Hoya in pond and they really, the Hoya really like it in pond. So I thought, why not try that? So what I did was a, I'm pretty sure it's a Hoya a Crimson Princess. It's just a cutting that I got from a local friend. Super cute. And so when I first put it in there, it had some decent roots, but not great. And as you can see, the roots are actually doing <laughs> amazing. Like it has really taken off. I might have to adjust it so the roots aren't sitting in the water. <laughs> and actually, since putting it in pond, it has started to grow. I don't know if you can see, there is some new leaves happening, which is great. Like. It hadn't been doing anything since I rooted it and everything, but since in pond, it's growing. And I love that. <laughs> Next up is an alocasia that I actually grew from a bulb. It's an alocasia boa. And you can really see in there, the roots have taken off like crazy in pond. Like, there's so many roots in here, it's absolutely insane. And the next one is a Hoya Lacunosa heart leaf, I believe. I got this from Patrick, a local friend here. And yeah, this one, so he gave it to me as a cutting, and I got a little bit of roots in moss, only about like an inch long, and then I put it in here, and the roots have taken off. Like there's one down here that's like going towards the water. When people say they love pond, I really understand now because I love pond. <laughs> and then another one that I have in pond is a Cebu Blue cutting that I got from a friend Christina here. And he is doing super well. He actually, she gave it to me with two leaves and it grew this leaf in the pond, which is great. Well, another plant I got from another friend also named Christine is one of my wish lists is uh, Syngonium albo. It had roots and I just put it in here. Um, I like to use these uh, wine glasses or glass bottles that I cut myself and yeah I just put the pond in there. I do leave a little bit of a water reservoir. Some people do, some people don't. So I guess whatever works best for you. And this one actually finished putting out this leaf here. And I just recently moved this Hoya Australis Lisa into pond substrate and it's doing really well. Actually there's another growth point happening down below. It's going to be too hard to show. But yeah, um, this one I do, oops. I just have it in this clear pot and I keep a little bit of a water reservoir in here as I drip water everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like looking at it now, the roots are doing super good. 
taking off like crazy. Now I'm gonna go into a couple plants that I was struggling with a lot before pawn and show you what they look like now after. First one is this Skindapsis Silver Ann. I had this in like a chunky airwood mix and I don't know what happened. The roots were super healthy and the plant just decided it wanted to die. <laughs> so I took a cutting, rooted it in water, the roots in water kind of stopped growing and not doing anything. So I put it in LECA, started taking off doing really well, and then I wanted to try Pond. And I used my DIY Pond, and it's actually doing super good. It put out a new leaf in Pond, and the roots that I can see are growing and doing really good. So that makes me super happy that I'm not losing this plant. <laughs> The next plant that I was struggling with is Begonia Maculata Whiteyei. And this one was doing super well, and it did the same thing where it started to kind of kill itself off. So I took cuttings and rooted them. And this one, this one actually had in, uh, had it in perlite for the longest time, and it was doing super well. And I kind of just like, I love perlite, but it's so dusty. Even after like washing it, it's kind of gross. I just don't like it. And yeah, pond, it's doing super well. It's growing new little leaves around. And yeah, I'm really happy that it's doing good. Okay, so yeah, those are the plants that I have currently in pond. A uh, lot of smaller things. I haven't gone too crazy in putting bigger things in pond yet because I'm still experimenting, make sure that I kind of get it down. And then moving forward, everything in my grow tent in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, I want to go like completely dirtless as I either want to do moss or pond and see how that works out for me. And I'll probably throw in Lekka too because I really like Lekka. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you two plants that I'm gonna move into pond today and then we'll get into actually making some DIY pond. So the first one is actually a uh, Marble Queen Pothos that I have rooted in moss. It's super beautiful. Um, I'm trying to plan on growing this one like up a wood stake in my tent because I want to see if I can get some big leaves on it. It would make me really happy because I don't know like and my next one is going to be another Hoya, my Hoya Rotusa. It's doing super well. It's been blooming on and off all spring. And it's just like making me super happy. He's got really good roots in this guy. And I think I'm just ready to have him in pond to really see how he does and take off. So that'll be one that we're going to also put in pond. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about what goes into pawn and I'll show you guys what I've got and yeah then we'll get into like mixing it up and I'll explain everything. Well first things first um probably one of the harder pieces of pawn that I've had to find in my city because I've also wanted to use it in other substrates is pumice. Especially finding the right size of pumice. There I find big pieces of pumice, which I don't want, or I find really tiny little ones. I can never find the right size. And next is lava rock, which was a little easier to find than pumice, but still kind of difficult. I was able to find like a really nice size of the lava rock that has some bigger chunks and smaller chunks, so it works really well. And next thing is zeolites. And I was able to find it at a local aquarium store. So I went ahead and scooped some in here. And what I do is, I guess like one part pumice, one part lava rock, and then half part of zeolites. And I just use, I just use this little scoop. I do one and a half scoops zeolites, uh, two and a half lava rock, and two and a half pumice. And that's just kind of what I do. Um, I saw people saying that like, you want to do equal parts lava rock and pumice and then you do about like half of zeolite so that's kind of what i've come up with so another thing you want to do make sure you rinse everything and i rinse it outside so i don't clog my 
drains or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and go rinse this outside and I'll come back to pot up the couple plants. Okay, I'm back with this really fun angle. I have my pond here all mixed up, washed outside and ready to go. And I'm going to start off easy and go with this the Marble Queen here because it's just in moss so it should be easy to hopefully get it all out. All cleaned up, got some nice roots there and it's ready to go. I'll just clean this out and get it ready for the pond. All right, so quick change of plans. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this clear guy here with drainage, just like a orchid pot. So I can keep an eye on the roots a little bit better. That dark glass is hard to see. It's really just as easy as that. <laughs> really no mess compared to soil and just super easy to get in there <laughs> and really easy to watch the roots. Next up is going to be my Hoya Retusa. Um, I'll probably just pot him right back up in the same pot. So I'm going to get him out of this dirt, clean the pot, wash off the roots, and I will be right back. All right, so Hoya Retusa roots are all washed off and look really good. Um, what a fun process washing off Hoya roots. They're so small and fragile. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to get them back into this pot here. Just like that, we have Hoya Retusa in pond. All right, y'all, so these are the plants all potted up in pond. I will give them some water, leave a little bit of water reservoir probably, and yeah, just keep an eye on them. Make sure that the roots grow fine and we see some new growth hopefully soon. If you guys liked today's video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you want to try pond, comment if you've tried pond, if you love pond, anything pond related. <laughs> It'd be really helpful if you also have suggestions of how to take care of plants in pond. I would love to hear about it. I kind of just treat it a little bit like LECA. I leave a little bit of a water reservoir for some of them. Some of them I let dry out a little bit more in between waterings and they seem to be doing fine. All my little experiments are working and it's really fun. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.